they are on the. You'll you'll see a lot of them. They won't, you know, a lot of places won't give the victim the name. They may get like the National Sex Offender Registry will give you the victim's age <coughs> and possibly race, but they will not give a name. But it'll say uh, rape of a child. Rape of a child is anything sexual that happens to a child under the age of 13. And, you know, you got a lot of people, a lot of girls that's under the age of 13, girls and boys. You got a question? Um, um, where I'm, from, I'm from Chattanooga. Uh -huh. And like, in Chattanooga, they um, publicize like all sex offenders. Um, they tell, like, they have a picture of them, their name, and exactly what they did. Yeah, and they're right. All the busted paper. Mm -hmm. So it's, everybody knows. You all can go to tn.gov, which is the Tennessee website, click on the laws. There'll be a little laws tab on the side. The Tennessee Sex Offender Registry is there. You can put it in by the county, it'll pop everybody up. You can go through. There's some characters on there now. <laughs> you can just put in the county name and everybody that's Everybody that's in, in that county, county, just registers in that county will pop up. Can you search by address as well? No, you can't. You have to search you can search by last name, which you know, if it's a common last name like Smith. You know, it might be a final that will pop up, so you're sitting there scrolling through all the pictures. You can't, you can't do it by address, but you can do it like if you do it in Jefferson County, it has their exact address where they're living. And it'll tell the last time they reported. Now, if somebody moves, they have to report to the Sheriff's Department that they moved. So they can be changed at the registry. If they fail to do so, they can be arrested for failure to report on the sex offender registry. I'm not sure what that, you know, what that carries, but. I have a question. Okay. Um, one thing that there's a there's a team of students here who work with children after school programs. And one question that has come up with us is, so what what constitutes abuse or neglect? Like where is the line? Well, neglect. The way our stuff reads is, you got educational, environmental, I think the other neglect. That's the long side work as a little neglect case, but. Uh, you know, of course, education is like we get those. You say in court, when the kids come in, they've missed 40 days of school, and the schools file a petition against them. And educational neglect is a simple case to work. It's fairly, it's really easy. There's usually a hidden agenda why the kid missed. But as soon as you start talking to the parents, like, blah, 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 you know, they want to tell you 14,000 things why this kid missed school instead of eating when he got bad side and going full with him. You know, one of those deals. Now, educational neglect, and a lot of y'all probably remember, like from grade school, you know, it's, I know it's about to say the smelly kid. We've had a case where a kid was on juvenile court probation, this is another county, and they would have to spray with air freshener when he left. <coughs> Myself and my partner at the time worked that case. You could smell the ammonia from the porch. And of course, we called mom, she said, okay, I'll meet you all there in two hours. So we waited about an hour and we said, well, let's go and buy there see if she's there. <coughs> she was with a back seat full of cleaning supplies. Trust me, no matter how many cleaning supplies she had, she couldn't get the house clean. Then she told me she didn't have a key to the house. <coughs> that her husband's the only one who had a key to the house. And she, you know, she'd give us different times every time we'd ask her what time he gets off work. So we sent grandma to buy his work and she said, oh, they said they'd fire him if he had to bring me the key. We sat there, sat there, she said, well, let's go back tomorrow. I said, no, we're not leaving until we see the house. Finally, I said, ain't that window open right there? She said, I climbed that window. I said, well, I'm sure I'll climb that window. Look how big I am. <laughs> and finally, she climbed through the window and let us in after she put all of her dogs up. Well, we walk into the living room. We're standing there. You know the phone pad under the carpet? That's what we thought we were standing on. My partner, which he went to school here, he says, is that the phone pad? And she said, no, that's where the dogs use the bathroom. So we were standing in dog animal feces. But there's no way to dodge it because it's all over the place. I open the refrigerator, see if there's food in, and there's a big handful of cockroaches fell off the top of the door. Well, of course, we wouldn't let the kids go back home because it's so nice. And these kids were teenagers. But it was so bad, you know, it took your breath away. When I left, when we finally left the house, and of course we had the windows down, they was fleas jumping off my arm hairs. Where you know, because the lady ended up having six dogs and twelve cats, no litter box. So that tells you how clean the place was. That's 
So if, if one of our students were to encounter a, a smelly kid, such as the one... The right, you can ask them, you know, story, you can yeah. ask, ask the kid a little bit, you know, what all goes on at home, where do you sleep, you know, you can ask them a few questions. Just don't start saying, is there dog feces everywhere? You know, of course a little kid ain't going to know what feces is. Or you're even from state dog poop, you know. They, or so this general question. This general question. The and then, you know, of course, if you're concerned, what I tell everybody, if you're not 100% sure of the distribution, let it call it in anyway. And then we can determine that. I mean, we don't, we don't care to go out on it. We work a lot of late nights anyway. <laughs> and the state base is good for it, so. We, we've had a couple of instances where there's been, you know, the possibility that there were uh, one, one child abusing another child, particularly right. harass, sexual harassment. Now, and as that's far as kind of like, where's the line on kids acting like kids, and then, I mean, what's your responsibility if it's a child? It's not a, it's not a parent doing it. It's kids and kids. Well, I went to a forensic interview earlier this week, and I had a three-year-old who had been inserting uh, Legos into her vagina. And we talked to the psychologist at our, at our child advocacy center, which is in Sevierville. Safe Harbor, that's a great place if y'all ever see them doing anything, support them. But um, they do our forensic interview for us. I'll explain what forensic interview is in a minute. But in uh, sex abuse training I've been through, they say that it's normal for a kid from six and under to masturbate. Of course, you know, the a four year old's not going to masturbate like an adult does. But they realize they touch her, so hey, this feels good. But once you start seeing things like you see a kid humping another kid at like a daycare, we, we see that a lot. And that's, you know, go ahead and call it in. Now the thing is, if a kid's under the age of 12, we cannot indicate. Indicate means the DCS found, basically found evidence. When we close a case, we either unfound it, which there's no evidence found, or we indicate. Indicate means that they're permanently on record with the Department of Children's Services. Um, and the DA is not going to prosecute an 11 or 12 year old. But what we can do, that gives us the opportunity to get in and find out what's going on and try to get the child help. Uh, you have a lot of, especially younger kids, starting to act out sexually. And a lot of times there's a hidden reason. I had a case last summer. My partner, uh, here his name is Matt, he was actually my college roommate. And the detective went out to this people's home. My two victims were five and seven. And my perpetrator was their 14-year-old brother. Um, the father had woke up on a Saturday night, or you might as well say Sunday morning, it was like two or three o'clock in the morning. The 14-year-old was trying to put his mouth in the seven year or trying to put his penis in the seven-year-old's mouth. So the father, to try to protect his child, he tried to go take the child somewhere like Spinanza to get him help instead of calling us. Which, you know, we finally caught wind up and went out. I interviewed the kid, he told me everything. The dad said he didn't want the police officer in there because the police officer told him that he's going to have to Mirandize him, that he could be arrested. So, you know, the detective told the parents that what you tell DCS, they have to tell us. My father said, I'm fine with that. So I talked to the boy, and he told me everything he'd done to his sisters. Well, I was done interviewing him. And I was getting ready to stand up, and I said, Is there anything else you want to tell me? And I'm gonna, not going to say the name of his pet. But he said the name of his family dog. And I said, well, what happened there? He said, well, I done her too. And the child bent down and showed me his ear where the dog had bit him. And I went back out and told the detective, he said, did you get a disclosure? I said, oh, yeah. So that boy ended up getting charged with two counts of rape of a child because he penetrated both his sisters. And they also charged him with bestiality. But it come, we ended up putting him in custody because to protect the other kids. Got him into counseling, turns out he was actually perped on.